Do you want to trigger the fitness community? Say this one word, sugar. <laughs> Endurance athletes love it. If it fits your macros, you can eat anything. Calories in, calories out principle. Other side, it's causing obesity, Alzheimer's, heart disease. Processed food is killing you. Just the sight of a cereal box will make you drop dead. Tail as old as time, but something new I've noticed in this world of fitness. Is sugar the devil? This is a very complicated topic. Blood sugar balancing. Wearing continuous glucose monitors as a non-diabetic. The idea that these crazy spikes in our blood sugar is what is causing us to overeat. It's the scientific way to truly understand how what we eat is affecting our body. So as someone who consumes an excessive amount of sugar, what would happen if I wore a continuous glucose monitor for seven days? Is this the insight I need to give up sugar or is it just gonna prove that our bodies can handle sugar? This looks so scary. It's so big. Hygiene. Mm. Ah, it's so big. It's like a full needle. Is that gonna be in me the whole time? I mean, you just need to do a little trick. Right? I'm gonna vomit. What happened to his artery? There must be a video. I've been sticking this computer chip into my arm for over a year now. We just watched Shervin uh, do it and he just took it like a champ. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Uh, what happened if I like hurt myself? Uh, it's like a band-aid. You just have to, yeah. you just have to do it. <laughs> you can't do it. Okay, that was not bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> I worked that up way too hard in my head. <sighs> I just had my morning coffee first thing. I drink it with milk. Don't come at me, but I'm not biased towards my milk. I'll drink almond, cashew, cow's milk. I just had some with a nut milk and it just went up too. So that's kind of nice. If this challenge came at my morning coffee, I would just stop it. I'd be like, nope, I don't care. I Love denial. You know, Kelty, you're at a healthy weight. You have a healthy metabolism. Why would you be interested in doing this? Okay, this is my own personal story. I'm reading Peter Atia's book, Outlive, and he has linked unhealthy metabolism, crazy rise in spikes in blood sugars to heart disease, cancer, and the one that hits home, Alzheimer's. It does run in my family. It's always in the back of my mind that, yeah, you got that, you got that. I just am curious how my own physical and mental health is changed if I do level out my blood sugar. Confession, for the first two days of this, I thought there was a metal rod in my arm, so I was even scared to move my arm. Scan complete, sensor reading. Woo! Turns out that's just for the initial poke. So now in my arm is my CGM. And what all the science bros are recommending is the app Levels, which is what I purchased. It connects to your CGM and is meant to show how your lifestyle choices impact your blood sugar. From exercise, sleep, it connected to all my fancy sleep tech, my different food choices, and it's constantly checking, but at any point in the day, I can tap my arm and see my exact reading. A few minutes after my meal, it raised a few points. And then the highest it reached after my meal quite a while later was about a 15 to 20 point spike. Derek has so kindly given me some oranges. So we're gonna see how an orange affects my blood sugar. 76. So interesting, I had the orange slice and it's been a little bit and my glucose has been going down since having the orange slice and I've just gone every 10 minutes for a bit and it's continued to go down. And why is that? Fiber. And that's why you shouldn't even nice fruit. We tested nature's candy. Now let's test real candy. Now for Canadian delicacy, a wonder bar. Um, so I just had a little bit of orange, did nothing. So what would a little bit of sugar do? Don't worry, I will make sure to have like a whole bowl of fruit and like a massive chocolate bar. That will come in the video, but baby steps. So shocked no one, I ate a bit of chocolate and my blood sugar went up a little bit. <laughs> Math. Fun fact, the monster spiked my blood sugar more than coffee, but was also so small that 
it barely registered. The first few days, I was so nervous working out with this thing in my arm until I realized it was literally just a tiny filament in there and I could work out as normal. But I was so scared to even just do a push up, as you can see here. I'm going on a red eye tonight. So I'm going to be sleeping maximum four hours, changing time zones to go to Toronto for exactly 24 hours and then fly right back. Um, so what happens to my blood sugar when I still eat about the same, but just destroy my sleep schedule? walking on the street I used to live on. It's crazy. I slept two hours at home, drove to the airport, slept like three hours on the plane. I think all in all, I just slept under six hours. Interesting. So this morning, my mind is blown. I was like, oh my God, my blood sugar is so high. Right when I woke up from a bad sleep. In the past, I'd always thought like, oh my God, my blood sugar is all over the place after a day of not sleeping. But now it's normal. <laughs> Like once I went on a walk and just got some food in me and water. Yeah, it's kind of the same, maybe a little higher than yesterday. Once again, our bodies just deal with it. <laughs> Except for diabetics. Love you, we see you. Makes me appreciate what you gotta deal with even more. Little, little, can we get a little clap, 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 clap for the diabetics? You guys, low key, deserve to win the lottery. <laughs> Hey, hey. Hey, hey. I got back from the YouTube event and hadn't had a chance to eat for several hours. So I thought, let's see what happens when I put just chocolate and cookie in my system. No fiber or protein to slow down the absorption. And I'm realizing I'm actually loving this video because I can eat all the treats I want and just say, it's for science. I had a massive lunch because it was also like brunch, like time zone and like a bar. And so I've been at the YouTube event for the last couple hours. I went from empty stomach to having a dairy milk bar and a chocolate chip cookie. So you think crazy blood sugar spike, it's still in the green. It's 87, it's spiked up. How listening to these podcasts made me kind of have this impression that like, oh my God, I had a little bit of sugar and it's gonna spike and I'm gonna crash and all this and like, it happens, but our bodies are pretty sick. Like when they're working properly, they handle it. It might not be the same for someone who's metabolic issues. And that's where this thing could be beneficial. I got one restaurant I miss so much in Toronto was Impact Kitchen, grass fed beef. Oh, and so I got like a rice bowl which I'm gonna devour. Don't worry, I had a real dinner after the candy, and yes, my blood sugar was shockingly pretty stable, even though I had a lack of sleep and sporadic schedule the last 36 hours. Answer some questions from you guys. First, what's the point if you're not diabetic? I've just noticed a lot of podcasters recommending this and it just seems to be the it thing. I've heard this girl, glucose goddess, blood sugar balancing. It's this whole idea, it will help balance our energy in the day because we're not having these big dips. And so the idea with wearing one of these is you can see what foods are causing these big blood sugar rises and then that leads to a crash later. What would be the value for an already healthy person. Is it just interesting info, but not necessarily? Yeah, that's already in three days into this. I'm like, cool, that's cool. Now I'm noticing a bunch of things on here. Like some people are saying eating chocolate with baked oatmeal clashes your blood sugar. Intermittent fasting helps it. So I'm gonna wait till I get a bunch of these answers. And then I think my last few days, I'm just gonna test all these things. So if you've ever wondered, <laughs> Let's just, I got this thing and I'm already bored of it. So I'm like, let's just throw the wall at it. Okay, here was the one time I saw a dramatic change in my blood sugar. My flight back to Vancouver was delayed six times. So that means an extra six hours in the airport and my meals were just random things I could have. I had a lot of chocolate, a protein bar and a breakfast sandwich. And my blood sugar was pretty stable with all this. But then after a couple hours in the air, it dropped significantly. And I'm gonna contribute that to maybe missing a meal just due to time zone changes and not even realizing it. Sometimes that happens. Your body is in one time zone, but your mind's in another. And so when I got back to Vancouver, I had a massive lunch and all was good. Saturday after all the traveling and I'm just like, oh, it's so hard to leave the house. And I'm just like, oh, that low energy, like funk. And this is one of those feelings where I'm like, oh, am I really low blood sugar? Am I really high blood sugar? What is it? So I thought this would be really interesting, but I took my blood sugar and it's like high 80s, low 90s, like nothing crazy. It could be very well that I just need more food. Maybe I need more sleep, but it's not like testing your blood sugar is going to be the cure to everything. Like I kind of had this impression in my head that now that I have this, when I feel this down, my blood sugar is too low or high. When I feel great, my blood sugar is perfect. Like I thought it'd be like perfectly aligned and it's not. 
After two days of crap sleep, there's nothing I wanted more than just a good, solid eight hours of sleep, which I know would help my blood sugar for sure. Getting back to my nighttime routine that I love so much. Step one, dinner, met up with some friends. We had some pizza, salad, short ribs. Two, evening walk after dinner. I love three, shower, and have some in my showers usually when my bed starts warming up. Oh, this is the best part about my eight sleep. I love then we do a skincare and my sleepy tea. I brain dump. I always have racing thoughts before bed and I've learned if I just write a note right before bed, I know there, it's there and I can deal with it in the morning. Then I crawl into bed and my biggest issue is not that I can't sleep. It's that I never wanted to get into bed. The rest of the world is more exciting. So the best thing I could do was just create this bed that was so craveable. Like when I was in Toronto, in that bed, it was a nice bed. It was a nice hotel bed. I don't care. There's no bed on earth. I want more than my eight sleep. When I crawl into bed, it's preheated. So my bed's already felt like I've been in there and it's cozy. Peter Tia, Andrew Huberman, they're all telling us we need a cold room when we sleep, but I don't want to. It has an autopilot that lowers when I'm in bed. So I don't realize it's cold, but it's good for me. And then I have it programmed so it heats back up right before I wake up. So I didn't even realize I was in this cold, which is so good for my health. It tracks my sleep. I know just like this continuous glucose monitor, tracking isn't for everyone, but for me, it makes me excited to go to bed because it's gamified. I can win my sleep. I've been using it for six months and I geek out so much about this thing. Yes, it is a luxury item. Everyone has their own priorities. I don't have a car <laughs> because if the health people have told us anything, sleep is the foundation to everything. So that is the one thing in life I'm like, okay, splurging on. Cause I'm like, wow, this is actually gonna let me live longer. I do invest in my sleep. If you want to invest in your sleep, click the link in my bio and get $150 off your eight sleep pod cover. If there's one word that beats sugar in trendiness, that is Ozempic. Now this is another example about something that was revolutionary for diabetics and now the general consumer is using it. And this is where I think weight loss is weird and tricky because there's a line, there's a, there's a line. I truly think Ozempic can be an amazing thing for some people who have struggled with their weight. It's really easy for someone to say who's perfectly healthy, has a balanced metabolism, and is like, just eat less, move more. This, this person is battling blood sugar spikes that make it so hard to control how you're eating. Like just imagine if you're ravenous, you'd fasted for two days and someone's like, mind your portions. I'd be like, no! No, I'm hungry, let me eat. And like, so that's what you don't like realize, you know? And that's why something like Ozempic was so revolutionary for people who are truly battling obesity and their own body is working against them and their mind. And it's so hard to make good choices when your body's screaming at you to make others. And that's why Ozempic has been great for so many people. Same with these, these this is actually crazy that this thing is just in my arm and constantly checking my blood sugar. That's so amazing for diabetics, but like anything. Diet industry here is there's a way we can make money and tell people they'll lose weight. Oh, they will profit off it. Insert Ozempic for everybody. And now that's where I think I have the issue. I have the issue with people who guess what? Yeah, who are just taking the easy way out that they could easily do it on their own. It just takes a little willpower. That's where, but when the people who have chronic disease like obesity issues with their metabolism and irregular blood sugar, and that's where I think these things are and they're not a tool for someone who's just trying to lose five pounds to get in a bikini. And it's really hard to say what's right and what's wrong, but I think the line is, are you doing this because you're trying to become as skinny as possible? Or are you doing this because you're trying to become as healthy as possible? Um, once again, I'm not a doctor. This is just my own opinion. I'd love to hear now in the comments from you, especially if you're a diabetic, you're someone who's used any of these blood sugar monitoring things, or you're a doctor. What are your thoughts in this battle? Cause I am just like, let's all just be healthy. Today I ran the CIBC run for the cure. <laughs> And it was my long run for the week. So in total, I ran 14 kilometers on Saturday. And when I run, I eat very high glycemic sugar foods during or before my runs. That's just what works for me and my own athletic performance. That plus some intense exercise it led to an elevated blood sugar, which I'm guessing simply means my body was in the process of utilizing the sugar that was in my body for fuel. Okay, I officially hate this glucose monitor because I just tested it I'm just before bed and I looked and it's the highest it's ever been. And then I started to panic and I wasn't like fully done my meal. I'm still hungry. And I was like, oh, I should stop eating. I'm not a diabetic. Like suddenly I was like, oh my God, this is so unhealthy. Like seeing this high number made me think I was gonna die. I was like, I'm not a diabetic. So I started like messing with my mind just now. And it was just probably the order I ate my food. I had a bunch of sugar or whatever. I don't even know. It's not even that high. For me, I don't think this is good because suddenly it's just like, oh, can't. My blood sugar is too high. Like I started panicking. 
Anyway. Yeah, after I ate, finished my dinner, then like my blood sugar dropped down. A normal number. I got to being curious when I started doing this. I was like, how do diabetics view this? Is it it's something they've struggled with their whole life and now seeing just a regular person who's healthy using this technology that wasn't even available to them for so long. So I actually asked a couple of you guys that are diabetics to send me a video. I just came here to uh, provide my two cents on CGMs for non-diabetics. I personally am not a big fan of it and there are two main reasons. A lot of people like want to try them out to see what their blood sugar is but then they look at the data and they start getting scared about seeing little increases in their blood sugar which is a perfectly normal like response that happens when you eat food or you eat like something that has a lot of carbs, that has a lot of fat, that your blood sugar is gonna come up a little bit, but then your pancreas is just gonna work to bring it back down because you have a normal functioning pancreas. It creates a lot of fear in eating foods. And then the second problem that I have is what's going on with Ozempic right now and how um, people are getting Ozempic that don't need, that don't like need it because type 2 is eosempic and people that are insulin resistant eosempic but not um, like the regular person just trying to lose weight. The fact that there's like a, still a shortage after all this time, I'm afraid that's what's going to happen with CGMs and that we're going to start having a shortage and then I might not be able to get my CGM but you know Joe Schmo down the street that's you know perfectly healthy and normal uh, won't be able to like we'll still get a CGM. So that's a my big issue with it. That's just my two cents. Thanks for making this video. Now I have a few questions still about this that I don't have answered, but I'm not a registered dietitian. I'm not a doctor. So I went to Andy, the RD. He's a registered dietitian out of Toronto to answer a few questions. Low blood sugar can put you in ketosis, but can you lose fat without being in ketosis? Now in terms of the keto diet, ketosis and fat loss, I mean, the question was, can you lose fat without being in ketosis? And the, an the answer is absolutely. Now this can be a little bit complicated, but what you have to know is that no matter what kind of diet you eat, your body maintains its blood sugar levels within a certain range because that's necessary for its function. Now, some people who switch to a keto diet, their average blood sugar levels might drop because of the nature of the changes they make. And what the keto diet really means is that you're eating most of your calories from fat. So naturally, on some level, your body's going to use fat for fuel, whereas someone who eats a balanced diet eats most of their calories from carbohydrates. Their bodies use carbohydrates from fuel. Oh, I don't know how to say this word. Is betherbrin, ber berber, berberine, berber then <laughs> safe? Is it nature's ozempic? So let's talk about the keto diet and also the popular supplement berberine in terms of blood sugar levels. So berberine, first of all, is a pretty well-studied supplement. It does seem to be safe and it definitely does seem to offer a little bit of benefit in terms of lowering blood sugar levels, lowering cholesterol levels, and may give you a little bit of benefit for weight loss as well. If you wanna use a supplement like this, I mean, with all supplements, I recommend doing so with the supervision of a healthcare professional and realistically to make the most out of any supplement when you wanna improve your life, you also wanna do it in conjunction with improving your diet and being more physically active. That's how I look at it. Is this just another way for people to restrict their calories like keto or carbless? Does it really matter if you aren't diabetic? What can I do with the info it provides? Could it help me on my weight loss journey? Registered dietitian, I'm really unsure about the value of you know continuous blood glucose monitoring in otherwise healthy person. I've seen clients do it and certainly, you know, it can cause them to become a little bit too obsessed with the numbers. Perhaps they don't know how to interpret the numbers. So I think it's very important that if someone was going to do this, that they did it with the oversight of a health professional because we have to you know, realize a lot of people out there, you know, they don't have a, a really, really strong understanding of nutrition and how the body works. So if you jump into something like this without that knowledge, you're going to be confused and maybe overwhelmed by the results. So that's one thing. The other thing is, you know, Scientifically, when you work with a dietitian or you work with a healthcare professional, you can learn a lot about how different foods and different combinations of foods affect your blood sugar levels. Topics like the glycemic index, mixing different food components in meals and snacks. I mean, if you don't have that knowledge to start with, I'm not sure what value you're gonna get from then tracking your blood sugar levels because you have to have that baseline awareness. And my view is that you can greatly improve your health, greatly improve your diet without ever actively checking your blood sugar on a daily basis. So that's one thing. The other thing is, you know, 
scientifically, when you work with a dietitian or you work with a healthcare professional, you can learn a lot about how different foods and different combinations of foods affect your blood sugar levels. Topics like the glycemic index, mixing different food components in meals and snacks. I mean, if you don't have that knowledge to start with, I'm not sure what value you're gonna get from then tracking your blood sugar levels because you have to have that baseline awareness. And my view is that you can greatly improve your health, greatly improve your diet without ever actively checking your blood sugar on a daily basis. Now, PCOS is another condition that is impacted by insulin that I did not touch in this video. That is because this deserves its own separate video that I am working on and will open up with my own personal connection to that condition. So stay tuned for that video. Let's have some fun with this. You asked me some things you've seen on Instagram and Twitter and podcasts. They're supposed to level out your blood sugar. So let's test these out and see what happens. Diet pop, didn't spike my blood sugar. Fruit, didn't spike my blood sugar. Vinegar before a meal. This one was hard. Like my blood sugar didn't really spike, but then it was a balanced meal. So like maybe it'd be a little different if I ate something that was just pure carbs. Walk after meal, this does definitely work because it kind of makes sense. Your body's like, oh, nice. Thanks for sugar. I'm going to utilize it. <laughs> I just posted an Instagram story and I was DMing back and forth with a couple of you guys and Sage, who's actually a medical student, and me had the most perfect conversation. So I want to read it. She says, as a medical student who spends all day looking at blood work in the hospital, I'd be willing to bet the average person it won't really be useful for. From my anecdotal experience, almost everyone that's not diabetic, their own regulates their own sugar pretty well. It's like you're bang on. Our bodies are impressive. We spend more time being in touch and listening to how we feel. They pretty much take care of everything else. Easier said than done to just become in tune with your body with the noise of the world. I get that. But at the end of the day, every time you just step back and take a deep breath and ask yourself, what do you really need? You're like, oh, I am thirsty. We overcomplicate it <laughs> sometimes. And our bodies are just sitting there being like, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. Your pee's yellow. <laughs> How do you not realize this? It's day number seven and here are my thoughts. Um, it was kind of cool. It was a real waste for me. I won't lie, I'm very blessed. I feel very happy that I'm healthy. And metabolic disease has so many effects. I'm reading Peter Tia's book and it's crazy how much having issues with your metabolism is linked to cancer and heart disease and Alzheimer's, which obviously is so connected to me. So it's crazy. But at the same time, I think we overstress it, not for a medical professional, but my own. Yes, I do have some health issues um, for sure. I don't do anything crazy and my blood sugar metabolism is pretty healthy. I think we overthink it. Taking out people who have specific diseases and I'm sorry, if you're dealing with that. For the average human, I don't have a crazy diet. I don't have a crazy workout schedule. I try and get enough sleep. I do cardio, some zone two. I do some sprinting and do some resistance training and I do some form of recovery. And then I eat balance. Like I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and protein and fiber. and but also I have pizza and drinks when I want it. And that's it. Like, I always feel I have a very anticlimactic result from these, but I don't think we give our bodies enough credit. This was very eye-opening of like what I can throw at my body. And it's like, it's all good. I know how to handle sugar. You're not a diabetic. Give it to me. Sometimes it's a lot, but we'll get through it. <laughs> that's how I'm feeling. Have a great day, go pet dog. Love you guys, bye. I figured someone would be pissed that that cake in the thumbnail isn't in the video. So I figured the only way no one would be mad at me clickbaiting is if I pied myself. So here you go. Enjoy. <laughs>